Abby from Chili in the Buttons and I'll be taking you through the Erin Dungaree sew along supported by our friends at Janome. Over on our blog at tillingthebuttons.com forward slash Erin, we've already covered the pattern details, fabric pick, sewing inspiration, common fitting adjustments and cutting your fabric. Before we move on to the sewing, I'm making the Erin Dungarees in a gorgeous needle cord fabric with a cotton lining. The style I've opted for is the full length and I've done the buttonhole versions there and I'm wearing the tie shoulder here. The sewing steps are the same no matter which length you've opted for and if you're tackling the errand with buttonholes don't worry we've already got dedicated sewing tutorials on our blog already for buttonholes including one step, four step and knit buttonholes. In this video we're going to begin to sew the errand dungarees starting by assembling the bib so grab your cut out errand dungarees and let's sew. We're going to start by applying interfacing to the yoke which will give the top of the dungaree some structure to stop it drooping. You should have cut out two front yokes, two back yokes, plus one front yoke and one back yoke in interfacing. Place the interfacing glue side down on the wrong side of one of the front yoke and back yoke pieces. The glue side of the interfacing is the one that feels rough to touch and the wrong side of the fabric is the side that will go on the inside. Hold a hot dry iron on top for a few seconds to fuse the interfacing to the fabric. When applying interfacing, try not to move the iron back and forth. Instead, use an up and down motion to move it so you don't squidge up the interfacing while the glue is melting. These interface yokes will go on the outside of the dungas, and the ones that aren't interfaced will go on the inside. Snip the notches. The notch can stick together again if you snip it before applying the interfacing, so snip them afterwards instead. Next we'll stay stitch the bodice. Stay stitching in this context is simply a line of stitching close to a raw edge which helps prevent curved edges from stretching out during handling, construction and with wear. For this part you'll need the back bib, the back bib lining, the front side bib pieces and the front side bib lining pieces. If your fabric is on the thicker side, like mine, you can use a lighter weight fabric such as cotton for the bib lining, otherwise you can use your main fabric for the lining too. Using a regular sewing machine, Sew a line of stay stitching on the curved armhole edges of all of these pieces. 10 millimetres or 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Whatever fabric you're using, just use a regular straight stitch, around 2.2 to 2.5 millimetre long. It's a good idea to sew in the same direction on each piece to keep them symmetrical, so sew them all from the top downwards. To help the bib lining stay hidden on the inside of the dungarees, we're going to trim the edges down a teeny bit. Once the lining is joined to the outer bib, this will encourage the seam to roll to the inside so you don't see it when you wear your lovely dungas. Trim the curved armhole edges of the back bib linings by 2mm or an eighth of an inch, tapering to 0mm at the corners. Repeat for the front side bib linings. Trim the top and sides of the uninterfaced front yoke piece and back yoke piece in the same way. If you are using the same fabric for your lining and outer, mark the bib lining pieces with a safety pin or washable chalk pencil once trimmed, 
so you can easily see which they are when you start sewing. Now we're going to start sewing the pieces together. Lay your front centre bibs and front side bibs, right sides or nice sides up. Flip one of the front bibs over the front centre bib so they're right sides together. Pin along the front bib seams, which are these long princess seams here. Start by pinning the corners and the notches, then pin the rest of the seam. Pin the other front side bib to the other side of the front centre bib. Repeat with the linings. We're now going to stitch the four seams you've just pinned. For woven fabrics, use a regular sewing machine and sew with a regular straight stitch. For a medium weight woven like cotton twill or chambray, a stitch length of 2.4 to 2.5 should be about right. If you're using a needle cord, lengthen it to around 2.8 to 3 to get over the whales or ridges. Or if you're using a lightweight woven like viscose, you could shorten the stitch length to around 2.2 to 2.3. If you're using knit fabric like French terry or ponty, you can use an overlocker or serger if you have one, trimming off the excess seam allowance with the blade as you sew. No problem if you don't have an overlocker, use a regular sewing machine set to a narrow zigzag. 5mm long by 1.5 millimetres wide. It's a good idea to use a ballpoint needle for knits as this has a slightly rounded tip which will help avoid snagging the material. The pattern includes a 15 millimetre or 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So unless I tell you otherwise, keep the raw edges lined up with the 15 or 5 eighths guideline on your needle plate as you sew. If you're using a regular sewing machine, always back tack or reverse stitch a couple of stitches at each end to secure the seams in place. If you use a regular sewing machine, trim your seam allowances down by about half their current width. This will stop them from being too bulky. There's no need to finish the seam allowances because they'll be hidden by the lining. Press the seam allowances open. This will help to find the seam lines and neaten them up. When we attach the interfacing, we use a dry iron, but you can turn the steam back on now as long as your fabric can take it. It's always a good idea to do a test swatch on your fabric first to check the settings. Start by pressing on the wrong side, gently pulling the fabric away from the seam to define it. Then flip the project over and press on the right side. If you used an overlocker, the knife should have already trimmed off the excess seam allowance. Press those seam allowances towards the centre. Now we're going to attach our front bibs to our back bibs. Lay the front bib over the back bib. So the right sides are together. Pin together at the side seam, matching up the corners and the notches. and then repeat with your lining. Now stitch the seams that you've just pinned. If you used a regular sewing machine, trim the seam allowances and press the seam allowances open or towards the back. Now we're going to attach the yokes. The interfaced yolks are going to join the outer bib, and the yolks that aren't interfaced, the ones we trimmed down earlier, are going to be the bib lining. Let's start with the interface yoke and outer bib. Pin this longest bottom edge of the front yoke to the top edge of the front bib, right sides together, matching up the corners and notches. Then 
Remember, the front bib is the one with the princess seams down it, and if you're not sure which yoke is the front, check it against your pattern pieces. Repeat with the uninterfaced front yoke and front bib lining. Stitch the seams you just pinned. If you used a regular sewing machine, trim down the seam allowances. We're going to grade the seams, which means trimming down to slightly different widths. Trim the yoke seam allowance slightly narrower than the bib seam allowance. This will cut down on bulk once they're turned inside. Attach the interfaced back yoke to the back bib in the same way. So the long bottom edge of the interfaced back yoke is pinned and stitched to the top of the back bib. Repeat for the uninterfaced yoke and the lining. Press the seam allowances up towards the yoke. Start by pressing on the wrong side and then on the right side. Now we're going to edge stitch the seam allowances to the yokes to hold them in place and keep the seam neat. Edge stitching means top stitching, which means sewing stitches that will be visible on the outside of your garment close to an edge. Position your needle so it's 2 to 3 millimetres or an eighth of an inch away from the seam joining the yoke to the bib on the yoke side, so the seam allowances are underneath it. You can use a ridge on your presser foot as a guide to help you sew an even distance from the seam all the way along. Alternatively, some sewing machines allow you to shift the needle from one side, in which case shift it to a 2-3mm to three millimeters or an eighth of an inch towards the yoke side, and keep the seam lined up with the centre of your presser foot as you sew. Edge stitch all four yoke seams. So on the front bib, the back bib, the front bib lining, and the back bib lining. That's all for now, we've made a great start. In the next video, we'll be working on constructing the bib and adding the straps.